knowing that I needed some capital, um, being an immigrant, not having, you know, a long credit history and all of that, I knew that I needed something more in addition to what we were able to pull together from personal savings. And so I just sat, locked myself up in a closet with my laptop and started writing. And it was really easy. It was not difficult to get through the process, um, you know, from, you know, applying to getting the grant, providing the information, all the receipts and receiving the money. Hey, Big Ideas Raleigh listeners, I'm Dan Bagley your friendly neighborhood city enthusiast and proud City of Raleigh employee. On this podcast, we're diving deep into the heartbeat of our Oak City, exploring the creative ideas that citizens and city employees are coming up with. And we have a sweet episode for you today. We're recording from Sugar Euphoria, a wedding cake and dessert boutique located in downtown Raleigh. More on the location in just a minute, but now let me tell you who's joining us today. First, Someone who knows a thing or two about unraveling stories and weaving narratives, executive producer, Dr. Sarah Gloa, an experienced podcast host, reporter, and producer who's helping launch this podcast. Hey, Dan. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the warm welcome. I don't want to be too corny, but I want to say hi to the Big Ideas Raleigh listeners and tell y'all we have a treat for you today. (laughs) Thanks, Sarah. And we're so glad to have you with us. Also joining us to talk all things small business are two great guests from the city of Raleigh, Mark Weldon, Small Business Programs Administrator, and Carl Brooks II, Small Business Support Coordinator. Thank you both for being here. Our pleasure. We can't wait to get into the small business and, I guess, the treats of the day. (laughs) (laughs) I definitely agree, Mark. Finally, we have Randy Smith, owner of Sugar Euphoria and recipient of one of the Small Business Program Grants. Randy, thank you for joining us and thank you for hosting us today in your amazing store. This is truly the cherry on top of our podcast today. (laughs) Thank you all so much for joining us. I'm excited to have you all in the bakery. Okay, so we like to have a little fun when we start off the program and we play a little game called Two Facts and a False. So here's what's going to happen. Our guests are going to take on Sarah, our executive producer, and see who can figure out what the false fact is. Mm. Okay. okay. Are you guys ready to play? Totally. Ready. All right. Listeners at home, we hope you will play as well. And uh, I think you're going to have a little bit better shot at this, Randy, than uh, Mark and Carl, but we'll see. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fact A, Ruth Graves Wakefield, who ran the Toll House restaurant, accidentally created chocolate chip cookies in 1937 when she tried to make pure chocolate cookies by adding chopped chocolate thinking it would melt. All right, that's the first one. B, Immaculate Baking Company of Flat Rock, North Carolina, holds the record for the biggest cookie, which was 102 feet wide and weighed over 40,000 pounds. And this this happened in 2003. Mm -hmm. Or C, in 1610 AD, the Middle Ages, (laughs) Italian monks created the first cupcake by accident. All right, these are your choices, and we're going to let the guests pick first. Don't you think, Sarah? I agree. I, I'm so nervous to go up against, like, a baking expert, and then also our small business experts. Maybe they know. It's so, possible. all right, we'll let them confer, and then y'all can pick, and I'll, I'll write down my answer, too. Well, I was around in the Middle Ages, and I don't remember, uh, okay. the, I don't remember the, the cupcake. I really want the second one to be true, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. the idea Definitely. of a gigantic cookie is that's pretty cool, right? So I like that. I'm yes. inclined to go with C as a falsehood. C. I don't know, y'all. I think I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm with you. Okay. Monks and cupcakes. Okay. Yeah, I'm game. Yeah, I just I'm can't imagine. <laughs> like, how do you even eat a cupcake when you have all that armor? <laughs> <laughs> well, so my guess was going to be A because I was like, how could somebody who is an experienced baker, you know, think that the chocolate was going to melt? Maybe, maybe they. Um, I, I don't know. Mm. I couldn't see that one. Mm. But then again, I've made plenty of baking mistakes. So, But I'm no expert. So I'm going <laughs> to go with A. But the way you all talked about C, you kind of talked me into it. So I'm kind of nervous. How are we doing, Dan? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I just, I want to make sure. What is your guy's final answer? <laughs> it's the C one. The it C is C. One. Yep, C, yeah. final answer. With a, a. Okay. Sarah, I'm, I'm sorry. It is C. Woo. 
Wow. Good job, guys. In 610 AD, an Italian monk twisted leftover dough from unleavened bread into the shape of hands crossed over the chest. And essentially what they came up with was the first pretzel. Mm. Oh. So that's what they mistakenly made. No, it no. is not a cupcake. Unless you're, you're a really bad, unless you're right. a really bad baker, I guess. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for playing <laughs> two facts and a false. And you beat Sarah. This could be the first time job. you've been beat. That's okay. I'm okay to lose to the first pretzel. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, now it's time to kind of jump in to see a little bit more about what you guys do, you know, why you're here. So Mark and Carl, let's start with you two. I see you both work, both work for the Division of Community and Small Business Development for the city of Raleigh. Do you mind taking a few moments to tell us a bit of what you do? Please feel free to explain it to me like I'm a kid in a candy store. Uh, okay, I guess we're in a bakery store, but close <laughs> enough. Uh, and we're gonna start with you, Mark. Okay, um, I guess the way to boil it down to start with is we are economic development for small businesses. So uh, what we focus on is uh, providing resources, tools, programs, events that assist Raleigh's small business owners, small businesses like this that are storefront businesses, main street businesses, mom and pop businesses. I don't know what term you wanna use, sure. but the, the businesses that are really the heart and soul of the city that we drive by every day, we have favorite businesses that we enjoy uh, going to, but they don't really get a lot of attention until one of them goes out of business. Mm, and then okay. everybody pays attention. Our um, The way we see our role is to make uh, the odds of success higher for the small businesses that want to get started and uh, want to grow their business over the, the course of time. Oh, that's powerful. The odds of success make them better. That's really cool. And uh, I, I love the fact that it's the city is trying to help the small business do that. So thanks for sharing that with us. We'll probably touch a little bit more on that. But before we do, uh, Carl, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Dan. Uh, and first of all, I want to let you all know you've been killing the uh, bakery puns all, <laughs> all episode. <laughs> so I uh, just want to let you all know that. But uh, yes, yeah, so, so to add on to what Mark said, um, I'm pretty much the face of what is called the Building Upfit Grant in which you know, Sugar Euphoria benefited from. So um, we are a reimbursable grant program. Um, it's not money, you know, free money given up front, um, but I'm pretty much over that program. But I guess we'll get into all of the other facets that we offer um, later into the program. So I, I just give you a brief introduction of what I do. Yeah, thanks, Carl. Uh, and Randy, we're so glad that you could join us as well. Can you please tell us a little bit about, you know, your journey with Sugar Euphoria? You know, what inspired you to start your own confectionery? I mean, what what kind of craziness was that? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of craziness. My husband will attest to that. Um, but I grew up baking my entire life. I'm originally from the Bahamas. So I grew up with my mom and my grandmother baking every single Sunday. It was just our little thing to do, our girls' time. And I came to college. I went to UNC. Go Heels. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Um, and uh, during that time, I did not bake a single thing. Like, I was just really? fully immersed in college culture. Didn't even think about it. And it wasn't until we graduated, all my friends left me in Chapel Hill, that I decided to start baking. Really, because I started watching Cake Boss. And I was like, if these big, burly guys can do it, <laughs> surely I can do this, too. Um, and so it just took off from there. And Sugar Euphoria has evolved over time. I used to have a storefront. Um, but I started having kids, closed it down. And I baked from home for a while. And then okay. eventually I started getting too many inquiries. I couldn't handle it and went on the hunt for a location. And don't know how I found it. I think I was probably going to two roosters for a little treat for myself without ah. the kids. Saw the for lease sign and said, you know what? I think this is it. And here we are today. And for folks who are watching this, who are seeing the video, they can see exactly where we are when we say here we are today. So we're right here on Person Street. But if you're listening, if you listen real close, you're going to be able to hear the traffic from Raleigh. I mean, as Dan said earlier before we started recording, we are out in the wild today. And we're going to get to hear a little bit about uh, what this building has meant to Sugar Euphoria and maybe even some of the history of it. So just wanted to call that out for any listeners, see what sounds you can pick up as you're, as you're tuning in. All right. Well, now it's time where we get to ask some fun questions and kind of jump in. And the first question we really want to start with is, uh, you know, Mark or Carl, what's what's your big idea that your department's working on right now? You know, what what's it mean to help a business like Sugar Euphoria? I guess it's kind of a double question, but, you know, what's going on? A lot, a lot going on. So big idea, uh, big ideas. There's some that 
we actually have been delivering very recently, so I don't know if that counts. Um, and then we have some future big ideas. So I'll talk a little bit about both. First of all, we're a relatively new team. We've only been in place for about a year and a half um, to, to focus completely on small businesses. The leadership of the city okay. uh, decided to emphasize the, the coverage that we uh, provide for small businesses. So our team has only been in place since the middle of 2022. Does that sound right? So uh, when we started, there were very few resources available. We had the, the Building FA Grant program as a, a program. We, did, we were working with some of our partners, and we had a couple of, uh, a couple of basic resources. So the, the big ideas that uh, have sprung to life since we started planning this podcast episode was we have, put, um, we have put a new calendar online for the public, for business owners to find events that are going on in our small business ecosystem. Oh, that's great. So if, if uh, a small business owner wants to find a networking event to you know, compare notes with similar businesses, uh, if a business owner wants to go to a training webinar that, that, are, uh, that is produced by a local organization, maybe it's a vendor fair that you, you can uh, actually set up a tent and, and sell stuff, uh, annual uh, events, uh, public relations type things, all of this stuff now we're consolidating onto our calendar. The reason is because all these different organizations who we'll talk about later, I guess, in the episode, um, there's probably there's dozens of organizations that go to work every day to help small businesses. Small business owners are probably too busy running the business yeah, to really know point. all of this stuff is going on. So it's difficult to keep up with all the things happening. Our role as a city, what, we, uh, what we're good at is we, we know how to connect all these different pieces together. So we are, uh, we have just, uh, fully fleshed out our small business events calendar, including events that are held by our partners. So that's uh, that's one big idea that we, it was a big idea when you uh, first started setting this up. We've actually put that online now on the city website. We've also put together a- um, and, and just to jump in for one second, where would they find this calendar? Online? Oh, that's a great, uh, great question. So all of this stuff is on our new small business development homepage. And uh, the easiest way to find that is like every other city website, go to RaleighNC.gov. There's a little search bar with a you know magnifying glass. Yep, yep. Just type in small business and it will take you to our uh, small business homepage that has everything about uh, our programs, the calendar, uh, other resources uh, on there. Perfect. perfect. So um, great question. And I'll, I'll repeat that maybe a couple more times. Um, <laughs> the, other, the other big ideas that we've put online are a, similar to the calendar, a training resource that is really focused on video assets. This may actually end up on, on that site. So all of our Partner organizations like Downtown Raleigh Alliance, Hillsborough Street uh, Service Corporation, Shop Local Raleigh, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, all these different groups that go to work every day to help small businesses, they're creating their own content and in the form of webinars. Again, it's hard to find. Okay. It doesn't have any SEO. You can't, <laughs> even if you know it's out there, it's hard to find. So we've created a consolidated webpage that has all of this information in one place. Great. And uh, we are working on phase two big idea is to make it a more curated list to um, help business owners really zero in where if you just want to find out how to boost my Instagram audience, then you'll see the you know two or three different webinars that have been put in place. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> um, and then uh, our, our uh, other big idea is we have invested in a lot of technology for small businesses. There's t over 26,000 small businesses in the city of Raleigh. There's 26,000. 26, and our team, wow. you're looking at half of us. <laughs> so there's four people. The math does not work well for trying to keep up with each business. From what I understand, Carl does the work of 20 people. He's, so. uh, he's, he, he takes care of the first 13,000, right. but uh, <laughs> it's hard to keep up with the rest. So anyway, we are investing in a lot of tools that are self-service. So it doesn't require a small business owner knowing who to call, trying to catch up with one of us during work hours, which is usually the same hours that a small business is working. So uh, these are 24 hour online tools there. Right. We have, uh, we have resources that allow a small business to benchmark their business against other similar businesses in Raleigh. So if you're opening, say a restaurant, you can go on there and find out what the, how much revenue a typical restaurant in Raleigh makes, how many staff they have, what they get paid, 
and lots of other uh, lots of other information. Heat maps that show you different areas where you could focus oh, yeah. your advertising, where your competition is located, where your suppliers are located. It's all um, uh, it's wonderful technology that we're trying to get the word out for small businesses. Uh, the other piece of technology that just delivered just last month is called Business Advisor. And that is a place where a small startup business uh, can go and find all the different steps required to uh, to open a business and to grow a business. And that complements our growing series of startup roadmaps, which are similar. Here are all the things you have to do to open a business like this. I bet you were surprised a few times. Oh, I wish yes. these were available when you're <laughs> opening your business. But there's uh, there's going to be city permits and city zoning. There's going to be county health uh uh, health regulations. There may be state things you have to worry about. If you're a restaurant, you probably have to deal with the uh, the ABC board. All these okay. things that a small business owner does not know, probably thankfully, or they would never start a new business. Um, <laughs> these are all tools to help a business owner, you know, get prepared, get organized, and get from the idea to revenue and profit faster because most business failures are going to be in the first year or two Okay. So the faster we can get a business through that learning curve um, with tools that we are trying to develop uh, and, and keep online, the better the odds or success uh, are going to be right, uh, right. for so that business. The, the startup roadmaps, I mean, are those already out there? Is that also on the webpage? Is everything on your webpage? The, everything, uh, every, everything that's on the webpage is there already, and then we're working on more going wow. forward. So what are the do you, pop quiz? Do you know the two uh, startup roadmaps that are out there now? Uh, I believe we have restaurants and Check. retail. Check. Wow. That Way is correct. Go, and uh, we are also, the next one coming online is childcare, which is kind of a weird that's segment a and very limited, but it's extremely important nowadays right. because that's one of the biggest challenges we have for both uh, business owners and sometimes customers that uh, without childcare, people are trapped at home with their children. And, yeah. um, well, I don't want to make that sound well, <laughs> bad, but uh, trapped, maybe. It's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a joy to be at home with there the children, <laughs> but uh, but there's sometimes there's an economic dis, um, element of that, that there's no choice because there's either no childcare available or it's just too expensive uh, to, to do that. And I loved, I mean, I saw Randy kind of nodding her head as you were talking about the roadmaps, because I think from one business owner to another, just knowing that there are these maps out there that are going to help people. A little jealous that these didn't exist maybe when we started our businesses, Randy, <laughs> but so glad to hear that they're there. But also not just as a business owner, as a Raleigh resident, I am so excited to know that if there's somebody out there who's interested in bringing a new retail shop or a new restaurant to our city, that there's going to be this roadmap for them, because I want, I want more of those in our city. And Mark, I, I do sometimes feel trapped at home, so I'm okay <laughs> with the, the child care option as well. Agreed. Uh, and so making sure that we have all those, just I appreciate it as a small business owner, but I also appreciate it as a Raleigh resident. Yeah, absolutely. And I, too, have felt trapped every once in a while. <laughs> but that comes along with triplets. So Well, and I think I think Sarah brings up a, a, an interesting observation that I think a lot of times when people think of economic development or small business development, they're just thinking of the business retention and expansion uh, part of it, which is an existing business growing, but it also includes those entrepreneurs. When when you were baking at home, uh, it, it, you still count as a small business. And our, uh, we, we see a role where we're not here just to help once you are uh, fortunate enough to find a bricks and mortar place, but to help that next generation of entrepreneurs find their way into uh, into a place like this. You, you bring up a good point, Mark. So. Randy, this question's for you. What mm -hmm. what was it like to start a business here in Raleigh, you know, just jumping into it? You know, you had a space, then you were home, then you're back in a space. So you've kind of been around, you've done it for a little bit. What was it like? So I have to say that it was surprisingly easier than I was anticipating. Interesting. Yeah. And, you know, I'm glad to hear that these roadmaps have launched and more in development. But I will say that my experience working with the various departments in the city of Raleigh was actually really, really good. Well, that's great. From permitting to having the fire marshal come in, you know, there were some bumps. Like, I just, you know, you don't know what you don't know you're until right. you're in the thick of it. Um, but even from finding the place, getting everybody to come in, thankfully my brother-in-law is a general contractor. So oh, that great. was the nice part about it. I didn't have to go and 
go through like Facebook groups to find somebody. Sure. Um, so that really helped. But once we got to the point where we needed to get an electrical permit and change the plumbing and, you know, talk to everybody we needed to talk to to get permission to open, I didn't have any problems, really. Um, that's so, awesome. yeah. And I know that's not everybody's experience, but I do think that between having the grant like the reimbursement grant, knowing that, okay, this is coming. We're working towards something. It's not as scary as I thought it was going to be because we do have, we had that extra help. Um, So yeah, I had a wonderful experience. So what what was that experience then when you, when you went for the building up fit grant with Mark's team, what was that like? I enjoyed it. (laughs) (laughs) That's the answer we're looking for. I enjoyed it. And it was my first big grant. I mean, I've applied for a couple, um, you know, over the years, I didn't, can't think of any that I won prior to getting this one. Um, but knowing that I needed some capital, um, being an immigrant, not having, you know, a long credit history and all of that, I knew that I needed something more in addition to what we were able to pull together from personal savings. And so I just sat, locked myself up in a closet with my laptop and started mm-hmm. writing and, you know, just going through the checklist that was provided from the different phases of the grant. Um, again, going to my brother-in-law, like, Hey, I need a plan. Like, can you help me? Like they want to see what we're going to change. So it was really easy. It was not difficult to get through the process. Um, you know, the timeline was fine. I didn't feel like I was under any pressure to get it done. It was just a really easy flow from, you know, applying to getting the grant, providing the information, all the receipts and receiving the money. So that's great. So that's happening on the front side. Mm-hmm. Carl, if I'm not mistaken, you take care of the building up fit grants. What's happening on the back side? What are you when you receive this information? What's going on? Uh, a bunch of craziness. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I say that in jest, but um, nothing. Um, so this is kind of the weird period. So I was brought on, like Mark said, in 2022. So Mark was already involved with Sugar Euphoria. So I kind of caught it on the back end. Sure. Um, so all the while still learning how the process goes. Um, so at first it was a little chaotic, but once I got my, um, my bearings pretty much, um, speaking with business owners like Randy, it was pretty much easy. So, um, like she said, she was for with all of the information that was required. Um, you know, there wasn't really a lot of back and forth. It was, she was available when, you know, we wanted to come for the visit. That's a part of it, um, is, a, is, is an initial inspection. So, um, yeah, it was pretty smooth. That's on the great. back end, luckily, and luckily we've worked it to the point now to where it's actually a lot smoother on the intake part. Mm-hmm. So that And so you mentioned the intake part. So as the non-city employee, mm-hmm. is is this, this is a grant that's been going on for a while, right? But it's still going on. So mm-hmm. it's, uh, Mark, you mentioned the team is newer, but the building up at grant isn't new it's and quick. it's been going on for a while and it's still going on. Can you tell us just for folks who are maybe wondering like, what is, what is this building? What is this building up at grant they speak of? Uh, I, I can uh, I can take a stab at that. So this is this is actually a perfect application of the building up a grant. So there's a misperception that it's a, a grant just to help you know replace carpet or paint something or just cosmetic maintenance. It's, it's not for that. This is an economic development grant, and it's designed to um, assist a, a business owner, but in return create more ac- economic development activity for the city of Raleigh. So um, a business that's taking a space and making an investment. And these are businesses uh, very much, the, the story is almost always the same, people having to take out second mortgages, run up credit cards. Oh, wow. This, you know, there's, no, uh, there's no Silicon Valley person coming in with a bag <laughs> of cash saying, hey, start your business. So it's a, it's a, very, um, it's a very challenging time for small business owners to, to, make, uh, to make a commitment like that. But the city of Raleigh values the, um, the additional economic development activity that a business, a small business brings. And um, coming in and, and taking a space that it was probably empty, it was probably deteriorating, it probably need a lot of it, a lot of, I would say tender loving care, but probably a lot of, uh, <laughs> even more serious than that. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've had situations where um, the, the building originally had a tree growing in the middle because there was no roof, oh, you know, that kind of uh, situation, bringing a property back to life and activating it with a new business that that uh, brings foot traffic and commerce and um uh, all of those good things that we want from our our communities. So the the program started in 2016, okay. and uh, the, 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 however many years that is now, <laughs> I can't do the math, but it, it continues. It's a quarterly program, 
every quarter there's a, a new set of applications that are that are uh, considered and we award them based on their uh, criteria of how much economic development impact they're going to make okay and um, we have happy happy stories to, to tell from it I love it well uh, it is time to take a quick cake break and uh, we'll be right back with the big ideas Raleigh podcast Welcome back to the Big Ideas Rally podcast. So we've talked about a couple sweet examples. I can't help it, y'all, of <laughs> small business development here in the Raleigh area. And we're now talking about the Building Up Fit grant. And so, Carl Mark, I want to ask if you have any other examples. We're here in Sugar Euphoria, and we've heard a little bit about what it was like for Randy to apply for the Building Up Fit grant and what that looked like from y'all's side. But are there other businesses or spots here in Raleigh that I should keep an eye out that maybe have benefited from this Building Up Fit grant? Well, I'll uh, I'll get the ball rolling with another another sweet spot uh, on the <laughs> on the east side of uh, of of the city uh, along the Newburn Avenue corridor, which is uh, another strategic area for the city where we're building out a bus rapid transit mm. network, yeah, the right. first in the city and possibly the first in the state. And along that corridor, there's a lot of small businesses there, and there's also a lot of storefronts that are empty that that uh, new entrepreneurs could could find an opportunity in. One of the other partners we worked with with the program was the uh, Little Blue Bakehouse out by the Alamo oh, yeah. Movie Theater. They Love make them. these little uh, macaroons. Uh, I think I pronounced that properly. I don't want to get yelled at <laughs> by the baking people. And, Randy, um, is he safe? They, uh, safe. All right. they're, yeah. they're colorful, they're fun, and they've been there now for, I guess, about, I guess, a couple of years yeah, now um, in place. And it was, uh, it was a similar kind of situation where they had to dig deep. They were uh, they were going through uh, their own journey, and um, the the building up at grant was a good fit for their program. And they've, like you, have activated a large space where it's not just. I mean, what what you're doing here is you're you're baking the products, you're also um, selling the products, but you're also doing educational things. You know, yeah. teaching people how to do their own baking, decorating, and they're doing similar uh, similar things there. So that was another. Um, another sweet place that we were able to apply the uh, Uffit grant. And I think I just remembered one other one down so South Saunders Street. Is that? Uh, okay. Well, before you say that, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and just make a small, you know, call back uh, to the actual business that, with the tree growing out of it. It's, called, right. it's called PR Pros. It's downtown. I uh, just thought I'd let you know. Yes, that was that was the class. That's the best example of the building up a grant I will probably ever see. Had a tree growing that, in the middle. That of it. Uh, it was my very first week on the job. <laughs> I was going there with uh, with my boss at the time, and I said, "Well, how will we know if they uh, they really you know did the stuff on the building up a grant?" And he he said, "Mark, it's raining today, right?" And I said, "Yes." And he said, "If we walk in the front door and we're dry." Then they have achieved what they were <laughs> what they were going to do, but um, but it, it was a it was a um, really cool building. It's in the Prince Hall district. It's in the historical district, and this uh, it, what was once a cinder block building with a, a tree growing in the middle of it wow. is now this wonderful um, uh, marketing agency um, location. That it's just beautiful the work that that the owner did to that that business. So you have the building up for a grant. What other programs are you running that, you know, help provide funding to uh, small businesses? Ooh, a big idea that we also delivered in the last month or so. <laughs> uh, we have had the facade grant, which is uh, historically has been around in the city of Raleigh since the 80s or 90s, I think. And we, when we, the city reorganized and did the things that created our team, the program was on pause for a little while. And we have reactivated that this quarter as well, by the time this airs, it, it'll be it'll have come and gone. But don't worry, there's another quarter coming. But we've redesigned uh, both programs so they work better together. Okay. The easy way to keep it straight is the building up a grant is for the interior of a building, and then the facade grant is for an exterior Makes of sense. a building. There's some little nuances between the two, but that's the basic uh, basic difference between the two. So we're we're delighted that we finally have that big idea back online That's and um, available for small business owners. The third and probably only other grant program we have doesn't go directly to business owners, but we have the Public Project Community Support Fund, uh, yes. which is designed to help mitigate impacts of large scale development. So the current examples would be the BRT construction going on in the city 
And then there's a, a zone around Dix Park where there's a lot of construction and development impacts over there. So we know that that, in, uh, that kind of development impacts both residents and small businesses. Sure. So the parts that, uh, that we focus on from the small business development perspective would involve um, programming that helps small businesses get the word out that, hey, we're here, we're still here. So when the roads start getting dug up, that customers remember to still give that business business because that's how they survive. Right. And then also help them, uh, equip them with tools that they can use longer term to think, okay, as, as things start to develop here and redevelop here, how do I fit in and, and how can I uh, most accurately or, uh, plot a course for right. my success? So you mentioned uh, the BRT. So wh oh. why does the BRT, what, what, what does that have to do with uh, the public project let, community support? Let funds? me start by uh, explaining the alphabet soup. Being, yeah. <laughs> being city government, we all speak in code. So um, the BRT is the bus rapid transit. So okay. Back in the day, we were look, the city of Raleigh was looking at ways to do commuter rail and the bus rapid transit became uh, a good alternative to get, it, to get large scale rapid transit in place faster. And it's actually more flexible because you don't have to get railroad right of ways and, and uh, stuff like that. that so, um, so this is gonna be a project. The first one will be New Bern Avenue. There's gonna be the four compass spokes, if you will. Next ones will be down South Saunders Street out Western Boulevard, and then eventually up Capitol Boulevard okay. would be the four uh, spokes. So all of these are going to be, frankly, disruptive for uh, for commuters as well as the small businesses along Due them. The construction. And the city, and, okay. the city recognizes that we need to get in front of those kind of impacts rather right. than being six months in and realizing, wow, all the businesses went out of business. <laughs> Bad way to approach it, right? right so yeah, right. Um, these are investments that we do with other nonprofit organizations in the city, uh, like the Chamber of Commerce and El Centro Hispano and other other groups out there that provide some of the services and support for those small businesses. Thank you for sharing that. I'd like to uh, ask Randy a question, um, switching gears a little bit here. Could you talk about the ways you think small businesses like Sugar Euphoria contribute to the cultural and economic vibrancy of Raleigh? Sure. So, of course, small businesses have my heart. My husband and I own three wow. of them. Yeah. I'm sorry, just to be just to be clear, you have three businesses and three children? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just wanted well, to call that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. My hero. So, and I mean, I never thought I had an entrepreneurial spirit um, until I started Sugar Euphoria. He always knew that that was the way he wanted to go. His dad's an entrepreneur. So it was kind of in his blood as well. Um, but, you know, we just feel that there's so many opportunities for growth um, to have, oh, and I'm going to put air quotes, control of your <laughs> life. Those who have a small business know that you are always working and it never stops. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I just think small businesses really are the heartbeat of any town, city, um, you know, being able to create something from scratch, build community, provide you know, a living wage for your employees, like all of that is so important to the vitality of a community. Um, and so we're just honored to be one of those people. That's amazing. And I love, you know, small businesses, they really truly are the heartbeat of the city. I mean, it, it is the people of the city. And I mean, I can't think of a better place uh, to come and make my tummy happy <laughs> in, in this little small portion of the heartbeat of the city. Uh, Carl, can you discuss any recent success stories uh, or notable outcomes from the initiatives that you're working on uh, that, you know, help support small businesses? I will say last quarter, um, we did have um, a lot. I'm not going to say we did have an increased amount of applicants as well as awardees for the Building Up It grant. So That's I believe awesome. we we had about nine awardees that came through. Um, of course, all small businesses, various different industries, but um, that's the most recent one specifically. Uh, but a recent win as a team, um, getting the facade grant back online, um, actually assisting more small businesses, not only with the interior, but giving them the option to um, also do the exterior as well. And not to mention just this build up of our library of resources that we offer for the uh, small businesses here in the city. I can also um, add that, I don't know if I should break the, the, was it the fourth wall or something, but 
Dan and Carl and me and Ferdinand and Jocelyn back in the office, we all work in the same department. We're on the same floor. We were just footsteps from each other. So it's allowed us a chance to um, partner. And to your point about the heartbeat of, of communities, the reason why the small business development team is in housing and neighborhoods, which at first blush seems really not intuitive, but the uh, the premise is that you your, your chances of having a healthy community are best if you have healthy small businesses. And conversely, your chances of having healthy small businesses is if you have a healthy community. So this is where it all links. And one place where we put that kind of thing in action that you're in the middle of is the neighborhood, actually both of you, is the neighborhood... Um, Raleigh Neighborhood College, where it's a way for citizens to get involved with the city, learn more about how the city works. And you're our uh, uh, ambassador uh, <laughs> presenter for that uh, for that curriculum. Oh gosh, there. Carl, I knew you were on the spot sitting next to your boss, but you're also <laughs> working. You're also working with Dan. Okay, so again, as the, the non-city employee, I have to break this down. So. Uh, Mark, we heard about your role and Carl, we heard about how you work with Mark, but Dan, we know you as our podcast host today, but you've actually been with the city for, is it almost 18 years? Yeah. yeah I've heard you say that. And so you have this role in neighborhoods and Mark is talking about how y'all work together. So maybe you could explain that. I'm going to turn it over Whoa. to you and ask if you're one of our guests, maybe you could kind of explain I just, it more. I just turned the whole script upside down. More, Sorry, Dan. <laughs> more from your work at, at the city standpoint. And then Carl, that means that you've got two people you're sitting next to that you work with. <laughs> and so maybe I'll give you a spot to shine. You could talk to us about one of your favorite projects, but Dan, first you gotta, you gotta unravel the family tree a little bit for us here. For us non-city folks, what, what's going on here? Y'all work in the same department, but different departments, but the same build What's going on? Yeah, it's a thank. Thank you. First off, Sarah, that's that's wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so no, we we do. We work in the same department, and we have different divisions. So I'm with the Neighborhood Enrichment Services Division, in which we have five units, and one of those units being the neighborhood unit. And we're trying to work more closely with Mark and his team because, as Mark succinctly put it, you know, community, a healthy community is a healthy neighborhood, and a healthy neighborhood is a healthy city, and. The small businesses, I mean, we are right here with Sugar Euphoria, that's plum smack in the middle of uh, Person Street, which is one of the coolest little neighborhoods in the city of Raleigh. Not to say that all city, all, all neighborhoods in the city aren't cool, uh, <laughs> but you know, there's uh, a lot of history in this area and there's, you know, a, a Krispy Kreme across the street. And then you have, you know, two roosters just across the way and art galleries. It's just a really vibrant area. So, uh, not only are the small businesses vibrant, but so are the neighborhoods that make up uh, this little area and the people that are in them. Because without that community, you know, do you have a small business? Without a small business, do you have that community? So our teams work together to make sure that we're helping the community uh, out as much as we can. One of our other small programs we have is the Raleigh Neighborhood Registry, where you know we try to bring these uh, neighborhoods together and help communicate between the city and the neighborhoods and it's just a wonderful way for us to be able to get messages to and fro, uh, and that's really helped a lot in the past. But ultimately, uh, we have another program that was talked about called Neighborhood College. And with Neighborhood College, we take the, the residents from the neighborhoods, and they come and they learn about the city. And uh, this is where Mark's folks come, and they speak to the residents at this Neighborhood College. And they learn about the upfit grants, the facade grants, and how they can make a difference in the city. So it really is uh, bring it all together uh, from the beginning to the end. And it all, it works really well. I like to think it works really well. I would have to second that. Um, I And that's where I fit in. Um, so I'm the liaison, so to speak, between small business and the neighborhood college initiative that we have going on here, in which I come um, and you know speak to the... I guess the residents, small business owners, um, you know, hey, these are some of the programs that we offer. Here are some of the resources that we have. And to let these individuals know that we're actually tangible, like we're here. You can touch us. You can call us. We pass out uh, cards, all of our resources that we have on site. Um, so, yes, it's actually a great initiative, and I enjoy doing it with uh, Dan and his group. No, thank you, Carl. We love doing it with Not you. Not to mention that they also provide great food. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I know in uh, on this podcast, we're going to give a lot of love to the neighborhood college because there's a lot of cool stuff going on with that that I didn't know about until we started talking about it. But for today, I also want to call out something you just said, Carl, about cards. So, Mark, I don't know if you remember, but I actually met you years and years ago. Back and it was the, the Chamber Innovate uh, Raleigh days. Yes. Yep. And it, I was, you know, a business owner and I was looking for additional resources. I was thinking about making a pivot in my business. And I talked to you for a few minutes and you're like giving me your card. And I remember thinking does he give his card to everyone? His inbox must be insane. (laughs) You had told me about a number of resources that I could access at the city, including that tool that you mentioned earlier, briefly, when you were talking about the technology, some of the self-service technology, it's that tool where you can look up other businesses in Raleigh and see more information about maybe your potential competitors, but really just to learn more about your industry. And you had told me about that tool and you said, if you have any questions and you gave me your card. And so to Carl's point, so accessible. And I think knowing that neighborhood college is one touch point, but there's a lot of touch points for folks who want to meet the people who have access, who have, who can help them access more resources related to small business. Can you tell folks other places where they might meet you? Mark, you said we met, it was a chamber and innovate Raleigh yep. event or something. Back, similar. Uh, back, back when we were, yes, we would get together with, uh, with the folks at the chamber. Yes. Those were, it seems like a uh, hundred years ago. And it seems like just yesterday, but thank you for asking about the awareness part. Um, I'm, maybe, maybe we can ask you how you found out about the building up a grant, and then I'll I'll uh, go from there. Sure. So I found out about the Upfit grant because I wanted to lease a space down on Blunt Street near the university. Um, The owner was not providing any type of upfit allowance or anything like that. And Uh he said, you know, there's a grant that you can apply for that will help you with this. Um, We decided not to move forward with that space, but I tucked that in the back of my mind. And the minute I signed the lease here, I was like, Uh all right, keep that in mind. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know how he found out about it, but it was definitely just, you know, another citizen, no employee or anything. And then, of course, once it was in my awareness, I saw it on social media for sure. And I was like, okay, this is something I want to do. And I just went to the website, downloaded the brochure and started the application process. Thank you for thank you for sharing it, because I I never we really should ask everyone, how did you find out about this so we can figure out what's working and what's not? (laughs) But uh, the reason I ask is because one of our biggest challenges is just awareness of all of these programs, of all of the organizations we work with, like the Chamber, like the Business Alliances, like the Entrepreneurial Support Organizations. Getting the word out is is one of our recurring challenges when we do our annual small business survey. Uh, we always, uh, that that is one of the areas that we just know that we have an opportunity to improve. We're making some headway, but to let business owners know that all of these people go to work every day to assist and support however we can. Um, these are these are really helpful uh, things. And this podcast is going to be one place we do that. Another place we do it is the Neighborhood Exchange right. that Dan creates. Another place we do it is the annual meetings for these different organizations. We try to be present with a table to, to provide information at every single event we can possibly get out to. And we have had days where I think all, all four of us are at a different place at the same time, talking to different uh, groups, different audiences, trying to get the word out of, uh, of what, what all is available for small business owners to get from idea to profitability faster. Uh, that's, a, that's a great point, Mark. Um, and now we need to... Sorry, oh, you did? Oh, I so did. Just, just two fingers. Yeah. But I was going to say that <laughs> once, I would tell small business owners here, like once you're plugged in, with the work that you all are doing, it's really easy to find out what else is happening because I will say that you all do a great job of communicating events and opportunities for small business owners. So thank you. I want to say thanks for that. That is a big <laughs> kudos to Mark. He does it. He puts a lot of time into that. Aw, and with that, we need to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to play a fun little game called The Sound Around. And I'd love to know, Randy, what was the first cake you made in this new building? Mm. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Big Ideas Raleigh podcast. And uh, when we left, we had a question for Randy. What was the first cake, maybe pastry? I don't know. What is the first thing you made here in Sugar Euphoria? Funnily enough, I just talked about this yesterday, Um, but wedding season was about to kick off. Okay. We had hired an electrician. It did not work out. I could not get my ovens in and approved by the city. In a time frame that would have had me going into wedding season with ease, 
Um, so I remember we had to call in another electrician. We got the permit approved. They hooked everything up. And I had three weddings that oh weekend. Oh, my gosh. So this was a Thursday night. The weddings were Saturday morning. And if you know me, you know that I'm very methodical with wedding prep and production. So I was just in here at 11 o'clock at night. First time using my 30-quart mixer. First time using my oven. I had batter on the floor. <laughs> Frosting was overflowing like lava. And I was like, what did I do? <laughs> uh, but, you know, I cleaned it up, got everything in the oven. And it was just a lot of late nights. Saturday morning came. I put everything in my cake safe. And I was like, whoa. I did it. I didn't think I was going to do it. So but it was a cake. It was a cake. It was three wedding cakes at the same <laughs> three time. Cakes. Three three-tier wow. wedding cakes at the same time. Were they like all vanilla or chocolate? or <laughs> No. <laughs> no. There was at least four different flavors, combinations going on that weekend. Um, wow. So, But I was like, you know what? There was no way I could have done this at home. So even with all the hiccups, I was so happy to be in the space. And the kitchen is huge. So I had a lot of space to spread around. Okay. Now, you said there's a cake safe. Yes. All I can imagine is that's something that you use so, like, I don't get up in the middle of the night and go get the cake. Not quite. What, <laughs> what, what is a, a cake safe? So the cake safe is one of the best investments I've made into the business. I'm kind of upset that I didn't think of it myself, but it is an insulated box that we use when we transport wedding cakes so that I don't have migraines the next day, okay. thinking about everything that can go wrong when I'm delivering all over the state. So it's an insulated box. It has a rod through the middle. Um, they sold me in their ads because they were going through like a little cobblestone road in England with it <laughs> on the back of a moped and the cake did not shift. Wow. So pretty pricey. But, you know, since buying them, I've taken a cake to Nassau, Bahamas for a cousin's wedding. Oh my. We've taken a cake to Utah for a photo shoot. And then I can navigate you know, 95 to Fayetteville and going over train tracks in Durham and out to Hillsboro without any issues. And the cakes arrive in one piece. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a, thank you for sharing that. You're with welcome. Me. I, I learned something wonderful about baking today. But now it's time to play the sound around. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to play you guys a sound. And once again, our three guests will go up against Sarah. It's my turn at redemption. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you ready? Listeners at home, are you ready? Here is your sound. Okay, there you go. Sarah, we're gonna start with you this time since you went second last time. All right. Oh, I'm going to think out loud, even though that might help uh, my opponents. <laughs> it sounded kind of motorized. Maybe you're, you, Dan, you do a good job of going on theme sometimes. So maybe it would be like, if it was super, mo I'm going to say a hand mixer, but that would be a really powerful hand mixer. Maybe you have like a chainsaw hand. I'm going to go with hand mixer. All right, guests. Are we doing this as a your team? team? Of course, oh. you're a team. It, it sounded like something like that, but you probably hear this sound more than I do. So what, what do you think? It sounds like a chainsaw to me. Chainsaw hand mixer? You think so? <laughs> <laughs> Gas-powered hand mixer. Well, they are building a, a big house behind us, and I do hear a similar sound, so I'm going with chainsaw. Chainsaw, See, right? I was, gonna, chainsaw. I was just going to say something in the dentist's office. I just came back from the dentist. Office. <laughs> oh, that, that sound, yeah, it terrified me. So is it because we're in a sweet store? You're going <laughs> with the dentist? You know, I didn't know if you were sticking with the theme. There is a connection. I mean, you're, you're not wrong. But so change what, all dentist. Yeah. All, no. So doing? as a team, we need a, a final decision. Okay. Okay. Motorized. I agree. I don't, we'll go chainsaw. I'll, I'll go with chainsaw. Maybe this is if you've got Chance one around the corner, shit. then you've heard chainsaws before me. Well, folks, Sarah gets her redemption. <gasps> it was a hand mixer. Oh, oh, no way. And it was actually me mixing banana bread in a bowl That's hilarious. with the hand mixer. So, uh, yes, I bake a little, uh, and I'm not very good. My daughter loves to bake, but she doesn't use instructions. So I think she needs to come, uh, Randy, and take some of your classes because, boy, oh, boy, we've had some really bad baked goods before. We would <laughs> love to have her. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, we have one more question before we close out the show, and this is for all of you. Looking ahead, what are some of the future plans or initiatives you'd like to tell us about? You know, what's your next big ideas? We'll start with Carl. <laughs> 
So um, something Mark alluded to uh, is to continue bringing awareness to what we do, not only here at the city, but specifically within small business, because we are here for small businesses. Um, that's pretty much what we wake up and do. <laughs> we, we think we wake up and try to think of new innovative ways on how to get this word out to the small businesses, because we want them to blossom, not only to uh, for themselves, but, you know, help spread the love here in the city. That's great. What about yourself, Randy? So we are taking on two initiatives here at Sugar Euphoria. One is that we would like to build and expand our drink program. So that looks like getting a nicer espresso machine that can oh. handle more customers. Um, but the challenge with that is just getting staff to be here early in the morning because I have three kids. I can't be here at seven o'clock. Gotcha. Um, so that would be great. We do have a lot of space for seating. So we would just love for customers to be able to hang out here, do some work. And just kind of chill out during the day. The second option that we are looking to incorporate is just more workshops for folks. I think it's a good stress reliever. It's a good creative outlet for people. So we do have the space to accommodate about 16 folks in one of our back rooms to do anything from like cake decorating to cupcakes, cookies for kids. So. Yeah, those are just two things on the horizon. I can see how it'd be a good stress reliever to take a baking class, especially if you have a chainsaw hand mixer, like <laughs> apparently Dan, Dan and his daughter have. And uh, yeah, you know, definitely we we will be signing up for some of those classes okay. because we need a little help. <laughs> As you can see, I didn't bring the brown or the uh, the banana bread today. So, uh, and uh, Mark, please, can you take us home with any uh, future big ideas? You know, your uh, division department has coming. I guess um, maybe I'll swim upstream for me it's we've had some big ideas that we've been able to deliver but small business development small business support for me is a lot of just blocking and tackling small yard type um things where do a lot of the 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 simple and important things do them well there's always going to be big ideas we live in the city of raleigh we are so fortunate to be in this area because we're growing like crazy right uh, there's a lot of communities that wish they had our growth problems um, but with that growth comes some challenges so the small businesses especially who are the real heroes of the story they're the ones that give the 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 city that its right. character our big ideas sometimes can be a whole bunch of little ideas that just stay in front of that curve and help um, help small businesses anticipate the growth impacts, how to navigate the growth impacts. And hopefully with all of that growth means more customers moving here, more residents moving here, more business happening, and then in turn, more uh, excitement for that next generation of entrepreneurs who are, um, you know, you uh, five years ago, <laughs> five years from now, then they're going to be taking their first try and, and um keep our keep our community moving forward. Oh, I love it. And I think for me, something I'm taking away again, just as a non-city employee, but as a, a big fan of Raleigh, a resident of Raleigh, a small business owner who lives here, I, I love that you just mentioned five years ago, Randy. I think as business owners, we have these stages that we go through. And something that I heard you say, Mark, is about how your division is looking to consolidate information so that it's all in one place so that when you need it, it's there. And Randy, you were describing, you know, in your process, there was a part of you don't, you don't know what you don't know. As a business owner, you can't take in all the information about how to start a business on day one. You no. need a little bit of information and then you keep going a couple yards, like you said, block and tackle. And so when I get to that next stage and then when I get to the stage after that, and then when I get to the stage after that, knowing that there's going to be a resource related to me in whatever stage I'm in at the city is so huge. So my biggest takeaway is that your division has that focus in mind and becoming a place that has some self-service options, that has some topical information that I can search through to get the answers that I need when I need them, which is just, it's really impactful and it's serving businesses at every stage, which selfishly I appreciate as a small business <laughs> owner, but more importantly, as a resident, I want small businesses to thrive. I want to be able to come and have coffee or take classes with my son here at Sugar Euphoria. I want to keep enjoying the small businesses in Raleigh. So I appreciate the support. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Carl, and Randy, thank you so much for joining us today. And Randy, a double thank you for once again allowing us to do this podcast in your delicious shop. And thank you for listening or watching this podcast. Give us a follow, The Big Ideas Raleigh Podcast, on any podcast app or on YouTube. 
We've got more great episodes coming your way as we dive deep into the heartbeat of your Oak City. And hey, if you have any ideas for our podcast, let us know. Visit our podcast page to learn how you can share your ideas with us. We'd love to hear from you. And a special shout out to the production team behind this podcast, EarFluence, a Raleigh-based podcast production company. Learn more at EarFluence.com. This podcast was brought to you by the City of Raleigh's Office of Strategy and Innovation, also known as the Office of Yes And, and the City of Raleigh's Communication Department. I'm Dan Bagley, here with producer Dr. Sarah Glova, and we'll see you next time on the Big Ideas Raleigh podcast. Now let's go eat some cupcakes.